Hello, uh, in this class uh, we are going to uh, look at uh, with some detail at this topic on technical writing. Now, uh, technical writing is a very important part of uh, doing formal research and that is the reason why we are going to spend this class looking at technical writing. Uh, it is also important to go through this class because technical writing is very different from other forms of writing. And so, uh, through this class I will try to highlight uh, what is special about technical writing, uh, what are aspects that you should be uh, aware of, that you should pay attention to as you do uh, technical writing. so that. Uh, it is something that comes off uh, well when you attempt to do it. Okay, so, when we say technical writing that is actually a more general phrase that I have put there. Uh, more specifically what we tend to do is to publish as it is called publish articles in journals. Okay, so, uh, there are journals in which we publish articles. So, this is what uh, we refer to as technical writing in the context of research. Okay. And uh, incidentally, uh, while I go over this class, there is one very good reference book for this, uh, which uh, I have personally found very useful. So, I would uh, encourage you to take a look. It is called uh, The Craft of Scientific Writing. By Michael Alley. and it is a Springer uh, publication uh, book. So, if you get a chance please take a look at the book. It is a very nicely written book uh, which very methodically explains to you um, what is scientific writing and how you go about it. Actually it talks about the broader uh, range of scientific uh, documents that one might write. Uh, in uh, this particular class I would focus more on journal based uh, writing, but this talks of a much broader uh, range of uh, kind of writing that scientists might do uh, including publishing in uh, you know more. Uh, uh, general audience kind of uh, articles. So, if you get a chance to take a look at the book, it is a very well written book, very easy to read, uh, does not get into too many uh, difficult technical terms, it uh, you, you can follow it very uh, smoothly and uh, and benefit from it and implement it uh, pretty nicely. So, that is something that when you get a chance uh, take a look. In any case, we will go over this uh, topic uh, in a more focused manner with respect to journal articles. So, that is what uh, we will do. So, um, right. So, one of the uh, uh, things that we will look at first of all is uh, we, we will have to revisit some of the ideas that I will present right at the beginning towards the end of the class we will uh, look at it again. But uh, just to get you an idea of what is involved here, uh, when you say a journal article there is a certain process involved. Okay, so, it is very different from the process involved for various other things. So, uh, that is why I thought I should first highlight that process for you and then we will get on to the topic by itself. So, the general process is this. Uh, so, as a researcher you run some experiments in the lab or you run some simulation in the lab and you get some results. So, if you have found something new, so that is one of the uh, important uh, underlying concepts here that it is something that is new, new with respect to what? New with respect to all the body of information that is out there. Okay? So, we will, uh, so these are things that we will have to revisit in a moment, but I just tell you in any case. Uh, so, it is something new that you have discovered in your lab and that you want to communicate it to the general scientific audience out there. Okay. The process by which you do that is called this journal article. So, you write an article in which you write you know this is the experiment you did, these are the results you obtained, this is the significance of the result that you obtained, this is the context in which the result has to be understood and then you send it off to a journal. So, there are many journals out there, you have to pick a journal which uh, pertains to which publishes articles in the same area that you are trying to publish. And then the journal will receive your article, it will then send it to some number of independent experts in that area. Okay, so, they do not just publish it simply because you have sent it, they will send it to some bunch of independent experts who will review that article, who will look at the article that you have sent and then make an assessment whether that article indeed represents something new in that area, is it something significant in that area, is it something worth uh, uh, publishing. So, they will send their recommendations. So, they may say that you know it is very good, you can directly publish it or they may say no specific things we need some uh, clarification on and once you provide that clarification it can be published. So, they will give some recommendations 
you will have to respond to those recommendations. And when that process is complete, if the result is positive, uh, meaning the uh, reviewers, those people who are the experts who reviewed your article, if they are happy with the article uh, in that it uh, represents new scientific uh, work and it is significant uh, work, then they will recommend to the journal saying this is worth publishing. So then your article gets published, it gets printed. These days it is uh, with online journals, uh, uh, with many journals having online versions, it will first appear on an online site as an official publication, as an official uh, paper published in that journal. Okay, so, that is the general process. So, over the years people have been publishing like this in established journals. So, journals get established in specific areas. So, there could be one in mathematics, there could be one in physics, there could be several in physics, several in mathematics, several in material science and uh, even in material science there may be something related to welding, there may be something related to nanomaterials and so on. So, for various topics there are journals. Okay, so, in those journals historically articles have been getting published in a very specific area. Okay. So, that constitutes a body of formal information that is available of uh, experiments that have been conducted by various researchers all over the world. Okay. So, you may do research in a lab which you have uh, never uh, ever informed anybody. So, that is not something then that is formally available for people to refer to. Only when you publish in a journal, it is something that other researchers can look at. Similarly, when you do research, you look at these same journal articles published by other researchers. So, that is the way in which we first gauge that we are doing something that is new. I mentioned right at the beginning that for you to publish in a journal, you have one of the defining criteria is that it is new work. Okay. So, how do you uh, first of all prove that it is new work? One way in which you prove that it is new work is you compare it with the work of other researchers in the same area. And you do this comparison using articles published by them. So, you use prior published journal articles to justify your current article. Okay. So, so this is a process by which you are uh, you know, uh, comparing your work with previously published journal articles and if it compares favorably, if there is something nice in it, something new in it, then it adds to that same body of information and your article also now becomes a journal article. Okay. So, so, that is the process. So, therefore, journal articles and therefore technical writing is a very important aspect of research and as researchers uh, we have, uh, I mean this is one common uh, activity that we participate in. In fact, in a very general sense, uh, one of the measures of scientific contribution uh, is the journal articles that you publish. It is not the only way to measure how good your work is, but one of the measures is uh, how many journal articles you have published, in which journals you have published, because some journals uh, set standards which are considered very high and therefore, it is considered very difficult to publish in those journals. And so, if you publish in those journals, your, uh, it is automatically assumed that you have done a very high quality work. Okay. So, that is the general uh, context in which we talk about publication in journals. So, now uh, one of the th issues that, uh, okay, so we are now going to talk about this uh, journal article process uh, and the journal technical writing uh, process and uh, some of the details associated with it. But before we do that, we will take a step back uh, and I will just very briefly uh, introduce to you things that you already know. And uh, the reason I will do that is it is exactly for this uh, reason that you know these other things that I am going to show you that uh, technical writing is challenging and that is the reason I am going to show them to you. So, uh, as a general person, many of the things that you read are uh, different forms of literature. Okay. So, so, for example, here, so here are a set of story books. Okay, so, these are uh, novels, famous novels which you have uh, likely read and there are many more, these are old classic novels, there are my, many more recent novels and so on. So, this constitutes a form of literature. This is available, you can buy it, you can read it, this is also published. Okay, so, this is published literature. The other, the other thing that you are very familiar with on a daily basis is newspapers. So, you get newspapers every day delivered to your home or to your office and we tend to uh, look through them, leaf through them, read them and there is a wide range of different types of uh, articles that appear in newspapers. So, this is again something that you are very uh, familiar with. These are magazines. Okay. So, this is again another form of literature that uh, you are uh, likely familiar with and uh, you have seen many times. This is just some uh, samples some samples that I have picked up, uh, but there are many other journals and many other uh, magazines that you would have read. So, these are commonplace literature. 
okay. So, uh, that is uh, commonly available and this is the kind of uh, written material that uh, we are more familiar with growing up these are the kinds of things that we read, okay. So, I have some more examples here. So, these, so these three for example here, these are journal articles. Okay. So, these three that I am going to show you here are journal articles. Okay, so, these are journal articles. So, this is what we are going to look at in greater detail. Okay, so, this is a journal article, I will again get to show it to you in a detail and also explain various parts of it and so on, but this is a journal article. Each there are three articles here 1, 2, and 3, and, uh, and you can uh, look up many more such articles uh, on the internet. So, right, the reason why I showed you these different forms of uh, written material that you can access is that. Uh, they represent totally different styles of writing. Okay. So, that is the first thing that you should recognize that you have literature out there that you, uh, you are likely reading very uh, often, uh, but much of that is very different. First of all, they are different from each other and they are certainly very different from a journal article or a technical, uh, technical uh, scientific document. And most of the time, the greatest difficulty that students face is recognizing this difference. Okay. So, for example, if you take a story book, so, when you see look at story books, the uh, intent is to, uh, there are, they are all written for various different intentions, but they basically one of the underlying ideas that you see is that the uh, author would like to keep you uh, interested in the book, uh, try to make any person who picks up the book uh, get engrossed in the book to read all the way to the end of the book. So, that is, so the in, it is intended to be something that any or any person picking up will stick to the book and try and read to the end of the book. So, that is the kind of uh, intent with which the uh, book is written. Often if it is a mystery novel or a suspense novel etcetera, a specific details will be hidden. Okay. So, specific uh, uh, details will be hidden so that all the way to the end as a reader you are confused, you are uh, you are unable to latch on to that specific technical detail which uh, they, have, they have hidden somewhere very nicely in that story. And in the end the greatest pleasure that you get from the book is how well they have hidden that detail from you. And uh, you know you feel thrilled that you know right, it was right there in front of you and you, ne you never noticed it and the author sp uh, springs this surprise on you. So, that is how a typical suspense novel is written. Newspaper articles on the other hand are written on day to day uh, events that occur uh, and so there the focus is the uh, urgency with which that information is being conveyed to you, uh, the key details that are being presented to you. Uh, and the you know concise way in which they are get able to get expert opinions and put it out uh, there for you. So, that is how a newspaper article gets uh, put together. Magazine articles uh, extend what the newspapers provide to you, they give you much more uh, you know they give you some context in which the uh, uh, issues are being discussed. Uh, again they are written by various different people uh, and uh, presented to you based on the uh, nature of that uh, magazine. So, there may be a magazine on interior decoration then they only talk about interior decoration uh, um, articles, there may be others on cur uh, current events and so on. Uh, so, these are all different, they are all written for different audiences, uh, different level of depth, different level of uh, reading uh, patients that they expect from you uh, and so on. Uh, but one of the things that you will notice about these is that they are not necessarily sent to three reviewers to get reviewed etcetera. They may have some review process, the publisher may have some reviewer process to understand whether uh, it is something that they want to get into. But in that, in a fundamental sense, they are not in quite the same way that a technical uh, article is written. A technical article formally requires th uh, multiple experts to review it, to say that it is new work and that is how it becomes a technical article. But there is more to it, uh, uh, you, to enable this process to occur smoothly, uh, there are various uh, aspects associated with technical writing that we have to become familiar with. Okay. So, that is what uh, we will uh, look at. Right. So, we will now look at why we do technical writing. So, why should you do technical writing? The primary reason why you do technical writing is to get credit for your work. Okay, so, the primary reason for technical writing is to get formal credit for your work. Okay. So, as a researcher as I said you know one of the things that people look at is uh, the number of publications you have as some measure of how 
how much you have been contributing to the scientific community. It is just one measure, but that is a measure. And when you publish in, an, in a journal, uh, it means that you have done something new, uh, which other people have not done before, which certainly other articles in journals have not uh, mentioned before and uh, therefore you are now credited with it. So, in future people will say uh, that uh, so and so was the pers first person who did this work. Okay, so, that is uh, the uh, important reason for this uh, to get credit for your work and, uh, and, and that is the particular uh, uh, reason why you should be uh, 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 coming up with technical writing. Of course, what you do when you get credit for your work is also you, uh, you are informing people about new results. So, that is an, uh, another important thing that you are doing in the process. So, you are conveying information, conveying important new information. Okay, so, you are conveying important new in information. So, what this information gets used for is a different story. So, for example, based on what you have discovered some public policy may be changed. Okay. So, for example, if people are trying to fund one form of fuel versus another form of fuel and your work is the first work that shows that one form of fuel is cleaner than the other form of fuel and you are able to convincingly prove that, then maybe the government will then fund the first kind of fuel uh, in preference to the second kind of fuel or at least this will be one of the factors that will help them decide. So, there is a lot of uh, public policy that is affected by research that is done. And in all cases, uh, it is not just a person's view that gets taken into account, it is what they have actually published that uh, really makes the difference. So, not only you get credit for your work, uh, your work then gets formally used for other uh, purposes including forming uh, uh, policies and so on. So, therefore, technical writing is important. Uh, it, uh, it is good for you for your profession, it is good for the scientific community because it helps the scientific community in a systematic manner keep track of uh, all the accomplishments of various uh, scientists around the world uh, and to help the scientific community share this information between various scientists uh, and therefore, it is very important and then it also gets used. So, this is the uh, reason why you should do technical writing. Okay. So, now having understood why you need to do technical writing, uh, we immediately I think should address this point as to why is it difficult. why is technical writing difficult? So, first of all, I, I must uh, step back a bit and tell you that most students, most research students, if you ask them, most graduate students who are writing their, uh, in, who are in the initial years of their graduate studies or postgraduate studies, who are writing their first paper or second paper, most of them will tell you that it is a difficult process, uh, it is not an easy process. And uh, there are various reasons for it. Uh, the uh, main reason is that most students are not aware of what is required in a technical document, what is required in a journal paper and therefore, they write things that are perhaps not appropriate for a journal or not in the appropriate format for the journal. And uh, one of the primary reasons for that is exactly what I showed you right at the beginning is that we are very familiar with things like magazines, newspapers, novels, mystery novels and so on. Those are the more common forms of uh, literature that we are very familiar with. So, and as I mentioned they all have a different style of writing and because they have a different style of writing and they are intended for a different audience and more importantly they are intended for a different purpose because it is like that. When you read that and that is in the back of your mind saying you know that is how an article is written, I read this book, it felt really good. So, when I write a journal article for it to be good I should write along those lines. That is the kind of imagination that we end up having and that is exactly wrong. Uh, primarily because that was intended for a totally different purpose a journal article is intended for a totally different purpose. So, the manner in which we write these two uh, ends up being very different. You may think that maybe even though the purpose is different, you can still write the same way, it does not work that way. If you write the same way, it, uh, uh, the journal article becomes a very poor journal article, it will get returned to you saying that this is not the way you write it. Okay, so, so th uh, therefore, the uh, familiarity we have with other forms of writing uh, is uh, actually works to our disadvantage in the case of technical writing, at least till we become aware of it. Once you become aware of it, it is fine. You can always read all forms of writing, recognize that they are different from a technical journal article and then continue writing a technical journal article. So, that is uh, therefore, the uh, primary thing that we have to become alert to, aware of and uh, implement appropriately in our uh, uh, activity. So, therefore, it is uh, generally very difficult and uh, so mainly because of as I said examples that we are familiar with 
examples that we are familiar with uh, which mislead us, uh, inadvertently mislead us because they were, they were just written for a different audience. Uh, unconsciously we just pick up those habits and try and pass it off uh, uh, to journals, uh, to, to our technical writing which does not work correctly. And uh, very high uh, expectations of first draft. If you talk to a graduate student, this may be the most common complaint that you will listen to uh, from a graduate student or a postgraduate student uh, who has just started writing uh, papers about their work. They will say, you know, I wrote something, I gave it to my advisor and then he wanted some changes. I made those changes, I sent it back, he wanted some more changes. So this is the process that goes on. And uh, the student feels frustrated thinking that, you know, I have finished the work, uh, why are we wasting time? Let us just put it out there. And uh, Primarily the issue is that they feel that the very first draft that they wrote is already fine, all the results are there, let us just go put it out there. But the, uh, with experience you realize that often uh, the first draft, certainly the first draft of your first 2-3 papers after which you will learn, I am for, for sure you will learn how to write it better. The first draft of the first 2-3 papers that you write uh, tends to be very poorly written from the perspective of technical writing. And therefore, uh, it becomes very frustrating to the student because they do not know that they are not doing it correctly and they end up writing the wrong thing all the time and uh, it gets corrected and they do not completely appreciate what is being corrected in the paper. So those are the things that we, uh, I hope that when you get done, you will have a better sense of uh, what is expected in the technical paper, but various sections of the technical paper and also therefore uh, have a better sense of uh, uh, why there are changes being uh, suggested in your paper and how to incorporate those changes, okay. So what we will do is we will uh, look through this. Uh, uh, journal paper and uh, uh, look through uh, what uh, we can uh, learn from uh, the paper. So uh, the one of the points that I will uh, make uh, here is uh, actually a singular uh, a specific point that I want to alert you to uh, which if you keep in mind which will be the background idea which will affect all the things that I am going to tell you about a technical paper, okay. So uh, uh, the and that point is simply got to do with the purpose of technical writing. So, what is the purpose of technical writing? So, this is the thing that we have to understand. What is the purpose of technical writing? Once you understand the purpose, all the other details that I will mention will make sense, okay. So, that is what we are going to do. So, the purpose is basically, uh, you can say, okay, you are trying to convey your work. So, you are trying to inform some reader. you are informing your reader of some work that you have done, okay. So that is the purpose and uh, sometimes in the process of informing the reader, you are also trying to argue something about the concept that you have presented. But in principle, you are trying to inform the reader, maybe persuade the reader about a particular point of view. Uh, for example, as I mentioned, if you are trying to say one fuel is cleaner than the other fuel, uh, you are going to inform the reader of the experiments that you did and then use some arguments to say why that uh, the results of your experiment. Uh, clearly show that one fuel is cleaner than the other fuel. So you are also doing some level of persuasion of the reader. So that is something that we will uh, look at. Uh, so inform and persuade. But maybe the most important thing that you have to understand of technical writing is that you have to do these two things or you have to do all of these efficiently. Okay. This is the important word. You have to inform the reader of the work that you have done, which means you are presenting the data that you have collected. You have to persuade the reader, which uh, typically represents discussion of the data that you have provided. So those are two different things. That itself is something that I will uh, highlight as a difference. You inform, which is provide the, uh, provide the data, persuade, which is discuss the data. And then both of these you have to do in an efficient manner. So the key here is efficiency, uh, how efficiently are you going to uh, do this process and that is the uh, most important aspect of technical writing. So uh, all the other details that I am going to tell you, uh, I will keep uh, drawing your attention to this word of efficiency, okay. So uh, with that we will now take a look at the a journal paper and then we will go over uh, what are all the parts there and uh, how 
uh, this idea that I am mentioning starts appearing at different places in the document. Okay, so, uh, what we are going to do is uh, like I said go through some parts of a document and uh, the reason I also want to do this is uh, to encourage you to keep reading journal papers uh, with all these ideas in mind and uh, once you understand these ideas you can evaluate, you can assess the journal papers to see if they are all also meeting these criteria. In that process you will become a much more critical uh, reader of those papers. When you become a critical reader of the papers, you become a critical reader of your own paper also. So then uh, when you write your third paper or your fourth paper, automatically the first draft of your third paper or fourth paper ends up being much better than the first draft of your first paper or second paper. Okay? So it is important to understand these things, look at papers uh, with these ideas in mind and then slowly uh, improve your ability to write your own papers. Okay? So that is the uh, thing that we are going to look at. So now if you look at a journal paper. Uh, there are various parts to it. So, uh, you have in uh, broadly you can look at it as uh, a beginning for a journal paper which would consist of a title, okay. then uh, you will have an abstract. and then you will have an introduction. Okay. So, uh, these three parts constitute the sort of the beginning of your uh, paper okay. and uh, in this also there are certain things that are no normally expected. So, for example, in, in the title uh, you sort of indicate what is the area in which you are uh, doing research. Okay. So, for example, it could be on say rechargeable batteries. Okay. So, uh, so, you have to talk about the area of research and also uh, what is unique about your work. So, that should come somehow uh, get highlighted in the title. So, if you just write area of research and you simply say rechargeable batteries that does not immediately convey to a pe person picking up the paper what you are talking about. So, if you are talking of about say a specific failure mechanism, let us say it is uh, you know mechanical failure, you have you done some tests on you know if, if uh, the uh, battery is uh, that rechargeable battery is subject to some uh, mechanical failure, uh, how does it survive the mechanical failure. So, you have to talk about the failure mechanism, you have to say you know mechanical failure of a particular version of a rechargeable battery, then that would be something that both identifies the area of research and also highlights what is new about it, what is new. So, what is new in, uh, in that area that you have been uh, working on which is what your paper is about. Okay? So, a title should immediately convey that to the reader. So, that is the thing. Now, the next point here is the abstract. So, normally if you take a journal paper on top is a title and then immediate next section is an abstract. You can pick any journal paper you can see it. This is uh, just an example here. So, it does not uh, matter if you cannot really read the uh, text that you see here. You will see a title and then you will see an abstract and then you will see an introduction. The immediate next section will be the introduction. So, those are the three that we are talking of here. Okay. Now, the important thing about an abstract which is where most students have the greatest difficulty is uh, that in an abstract you have to uh, sort of give away all the important results. So, in an abstract you have to give it all away. Okay, so, that is the most important thing of an abstract. So, you will be very surprised to note that in any journal paper that you take the abstract that you see here right below the title contains all the major findings of your work will be there. Okay, so, an abstract gives it all away, okay. but there is there is some uh, catch there it is uh, aimed at a uh, reader who has not read the rest of your paper. So, you, you cannot assume certain things about uh, the terminology that they may be aware of etcetera, but still it gives all the results away. This is where most of the students have great difficulty because almost any other form of literature that you read does not give away all the important results right at the beginning. 
okay. Particularly a novel, if, if, you, re, if, you, if you have been enjoying good stories, uh, the thrill in the story is that the, uh, the most important result or the most important point of the story is hidden from you. So, only towards the end of the story you get that important point. Here in a journal paper the exact opposite is true, right at the beginning you give the most important result away, okay. you do not try to hide anything. In a journal paper you do not follow the style of hiding your result and then uh, all the way to the end of the paper and then suddenly springing the result towards the conclusion. Uh, so, what you have thought as a very good style of writing is exactly not, uh, is exactly the thing that is not acceptable in journal writing, okay. So, you have to give your result away and this point has got to do a, a, a completely and entirely to do with this uh, uh, specific word that I highlighted earlier that the purpose of technical writing is to convey your work efficiently, okay. So, this is the most efficient way of conveying your work, right at the top of the document you give away your best result. Now, Students typically become very apprehensive that you know if, if I publish a paper and then write at the top of the paper I have given my best result away, why will anyone else want to read the rest of your paper? So, this is a, a concern that students have. So, they become very uncomfortable with this idea that you should give your best result away. If I give it right away on top then why will anyone read the rest of the paper? So, this is where again the purpose of technical writing differs from other forms of writing. The purpose of technical writing is not to make people read the entire paper that is not the purpose of technical writing. The purpose of technical writing is to give information of your work efficiently. Only if a person is interested in more details, they will read the rest of your paper and that is something they accept, we also accept. So, I, when I pick up a paper published by somebody else, that is exactly what I am looking forward to in that paper. If somebody else picks up that paper published by me, that is exactly what they are looking forward to in that paper. They want to see the important result at the beginning. If they are also working in that area, if they want to do an experiment which is along the lines of what I have done or want to improve on an experiment that, uh, that I have done, then they may read more details of it in the paper. But the purpose is not for me to somehow force them to read the rest of the paper. So, up front when you accept this idea that that is the way in which a technical document is written, it becomes much easier for you. You breathe easy knowing fully well that your best result is out there. If somebody just wants to read the abstract and move on and do something else, that is fine. We have no problems with that. And we should be we should be happy with that okay so that is what an abstract is so you give away all your important results here you give it all away in your abstract an introduction uh, talks about what is your work uh, you also talk about why is it important Uh, you may say something about uh, uh, what is required to understand your work. Okay, so, what is your work? So, you will give some background you know I am working on uh, say as I mentioned you know, rechargeable batteries and uh, why is it important? I mean uh, p uh, there are a lot of people who are interested in uh, having rechargeable power sources uh, for portable applications uh, and so on. Uh, and you also want to uh, in indicate what is required to understand your work, meaning if there is some uh, background information that people need to uh, be aware of. So, let us say you are looking at a particular kind of model for rechargeable batteries and you are using that model to uh, assess your data, then you mention that saying that in this paper we are using this uh, particular model. So, that alerts the reader that if they want to understand your paper, they should be familiar with that model. They may need to go and look up some other paper or may need to look, uh, look up some other book uh, to uh, make sure that they know what that model is, so that they can understand your work. And also when you talk about why is it important, uh, this is another uh, specific place where you draw the attention of the reader to other published uh, literature papers, other technical papers in that area saying that you know so and so uh, researcher X has done the following work, researcher Y has done the following work and researcher uh, Z or Z has done the following work and then your work uh, and in between all of the uh, important work that other people have done, a particular aspect uh, has been neglected, somehow they have not looked at a particular aspect for which you have now created some new nice experiment and that is why your work is in that area. So, that is where you compare your work with other journal articles, okay. So, as I mentioned in, in journals that is the process to publish you have to first of all convince yourselves 
convince the and convince the reviewers that you have done something new. So this is a important. Uh, why is it important? Is one of the uh, uh, is is the location where you try to highlight that. That why is it? Uh, how is it that your work is new? You compare it with what is already in the literature. You put, uh, put it down there in your paper itself, and then in that process you uh, convey that you know you have done something new. In the end of the paper, at the back of the paper, you will have a list of references. So you typically, if you take the last page of a journal paper, journal article, there will be references. So those are all art articles that you are referring to in, in your introduction, in your experimental details, etc. You are referring to those articles so that you can convey what uh, this idea. Okay? So that is how you link up with uh, other uh, work that is done. So this is the beginning of the document. This is the title, the abstract that gives everything away and then the introduction which uh, mentions what is your work, why is it important and then uh, what is required to understand your work. And then you get to the middle of the document. The middle of the document basically normally in uh, much, much of the work that we do, uh, if it is experimental work, it will con uh, consist of it will have your experimental results, it will have experimental details. it will have results and it will have discussion. You may have a modeling kind of work, so in which case you will talk something about the theory behind that model, uh, how you have gone about setting up the model, how, how, uh, how have you implemented the model and so on. I have put down something here which, uh, which relates more to experimental work, but you can correspondingly think of some parameters which would be relevant to modeling. So uh, normally uh, uh, many of the experimental papers will have you know experimental details. So that they will simply talk of uh, what is the experimental setup they had, what are the different uh, standard techniques that they have used, if those techniques had uh, particular parameters that had to be set at some particular values, they will mention all that. So all of the details of how each experiment was conducted will be mentioned here. Again the intention is to make it clear enough that somebody else who wants to learn your experiment should be able to look at your experimental details and run a similar experiment. So you, you hide nothing here, you make every detail of your experiment clear, okay? unless you are trying to patent something in which case you indicate that it is being uh, patented and there are some details as, which you have uh, withheld, but that has to be very clear. Normally the experimental details are written clearly enough that somebody else can reproduce it. Then you have results and then you have discussion. These are two separate points, a lot of uh, students actually do not understand this uh, difference. Uh, a result is something that uh, any uh, technician operating an instrument uh, can convey to you. Okay? So for example, if you are looking at say the hardness values of 10 samples and uh, with uh, say decreasing grain size. So if you find that you know the hardness is increasing as you decrease the grain size, then that is simply a result. Okay? So that is simply a factual statement of data. So a result is simply a factual statement of data. So you see a trend that is going up, you simply say that I see a trend that is going up. You see a trend that goes up and then comes down, you see you can mention that I see a maximum in the trend. So these are all things that any person looking at the graph can uh, uh, mention, can immediately recognize. So a result is typically a statement of fact, okay? so there is no judgment there, it is simply a statement of fact. So strictly speaking, if you have written your results section correctly, there can be no controversy on the result, meaning if I look at your results and uh, somebody else looks at the result, they cannot have two different conclusions because you simply stated a fact and the facts are as straightforward as there is a, that something is a straight line, something is a curve, something shows a maximum, something shows a minimum. So that is a result. So that is one thing. Discussion is uh, where you try to uh, understand the implication of your result. Okay? So here you are making some argument about that result. So when you say that when you say that you are seeing a maximum, you are making an argument as to why is uh, it that you are seeing a maximum. You may say that you know there are two parameters in conflict, one parameter is causing something to go up, another parameter is uh, causing the same uh, uh, thing to come down and as a result when the second parameter uh, takes uh, precedence, it starts uh, causing the, uh, 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 the curve to come down. And so it will be something that you are anal uh, analyzing, that you are using all your scientific background to analyze and come up with an uh, answer. So that is a discussion. Okay. And in general the idea is that a result is something that nobody can argue with uh, you about. Discussion is something where different people can have different opinions. So a discussion is to some degree an opinion. 
it is not some arbitrary opinion, it is based on some scientific uh, background and some scientific analysis. So, uh, you are going to apply thought in coming up with your discussion, but in general it is something where you have much more freedom in what you are doing. Okay. So, normally this is the middle of the document and uh, you can actually adopt different strategies for this uh, document. So, for example, uh, one standard strategy that many people uh, em employ for documents is simply chronological, which simply means that I did first one particular experiment, then I did another experiment, then I did the third experiment and that is how you present your result, that is chronological. You can also say that you know, for example, you are uh, discussing say something about a nuclear reactor. So, you may want to start from the, uh, in terms of temperature. Uh, the uh, outermost shell of the reactor is at room temperature, uh, uh, let us say something outside the nuclear reactor all the way outside is at room temperature. Inside you may, uh, you may end up uh, seeing a temperature of uh, uh, several thousand degrees C or tens of thousands of degrees C, even million degrees C may be there right inside. So, you can follow temperature, you can go layer by layer and you can follow uh, temperature. So, you can follow a particular variable and you can say, uh, you can do a spatial uh, approach, you can say you know outermost it is going to be something all the parameters, materials, etc., outermost are going to be something. You go inside, 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 the materials change, the conditions change, and the uh, implications change. So, this is something that is spatial. Uh, you can also look at something else like the, uh, uh, the variation of a particular variable. Let us say you have some uh, fluid flowing through some particular process. You can just simply look at, say, the uh, viscosity of the fluid. Maybe the viscosity of the fluid changes based on the conditions that it is experiencing at different locations in the uh, uh, path in its path. So, you can follow that. So, you will have some uh, schematic in which you follow that uh, uh, variable and you put up uh, key values of the variable at various places and you imply uh, indicate what these are. So, my point is the middle of the document has a purpose that is the, uh, the uh, primary uh, you know the greatest detail of your work is presented in the middle, middle of the document. Uh, which is summarized in your abstract, but it is present in the middle of your document. And you have different options available to you in uh, how you can go about to the middle of the document. I mentioned about the spatial way, you can follow chronological way, you can follow the flow of a uh, variable, it is a lot of different ways in which uh, you can see it happen. When you pick up a journal paper, you can also understand that that is how they are doing it. So, that is the middle of the document. Okay? And then finally, you have the ending. Okay, the ending of a document, which is typically the conclusions. Uh, so, you conclusion of your uh, uh, document where again you conclude the major results of your uh, uh, work. So, now uh, in some ways the ending and the abstract have similarities. Both of them show you, show the results, show the results of your work, uh, they summarize the results of your work. Uh, but there is one difference, uh, this is aimed, an abstract is aimed at uh, an audience that has never seen your work before. So, therefore, uh, some of the terms that you, you have to be careful with what terms you use here. Uh, you have to be a little bit more restrained on what terms you use here. You cannot use abbreviations which you have actually mentioned later in your work. Uh, it helps to keep it in a, in a manner that any new person reading it will understand what is going on here. Uh, so, that, you, that is the thing that you have to remember, that the reader has not read your work. In an ending, it is different. You can assume that the reader has actually read through your paper. You have greater flexibility in uh, presenting your work towards the, uh, in the ending. Still, you are going to in a concise way mention all the uh, important results and you can also give a future perspective. You can say that you know, for example, I mentioned uh, that uh, those two comparison between two fuels and that one fuel is better. You can say that uh, one of the uh, uh, additional aspects that you, that needs to be looked at is the uh, operating condition of the fuel uh, to see if the fuel that is better can be made even better uh, based on the operating condition that you are working on. So, some future perspective which you do not necessarily throw in in the abstract. Okay? So, that is how the abstract dif differs from the ending. So, these are the uh, major things associated with the uh, technical document uh, and in all these cases as I mentioned the idea is to convey your work efficiently. Right? So, uh, so, the idea is to convey it efficiently. So, that is how uh, uh, in each part you will find that theme being uh, repeated. Uh, we do not want to waste words and, uh, uh, and so on. In, in the entire document, there are a couple of uh, things that uh, uh, show up which, uh, which affect you know this idea of effi efficiency throughout your document and those two are language and illustration. Okay. So, language and illustration are two parameters 
that appear in various parts of your document. Language and illustration are two parameters that appear in various parts of your document and uh, they are very critical in uh, this idea of efficiency, efficiently conveying uh, an idea. So, for example, with uh, respect to language, um, again uh, the, in uh, common literature that you read in uh, say novels and uh, other forms of uh, literature, maybe poetry you read, the uh, there is less, I mean, uh, there is less emphasis on trying to write simple, straight, clear sentences. People would like to write some flowery language, etc. And so, when you read that kind of uh, literature, uh, it is the wrong example to use for a technical paper. In technical paper, you want to keep it very straight, uh, straightforward, uh, uh, clear cut uh, uh, description of what work you are doing. Some of the uh, you know, common mistakes that people make are first of all writing very long sentences. Okay? And a simple gauge of uh, whether a sentence is long or not is that when you read the sentence, you should not have to, when you reach the end of the sentence, uh, you should not have forgotten the start of the sentence. It should not be that you read all the way to the end and then again suddenly you are not sure how the sentence started, so you go back and read the sentence again. Basically, if you write it such that the reader can read it efficiently, in a single reading they can go from sentence to sentence to sentence, so they can keep doing that. And uh, other mistakes that people make are uh, using phrases such as it is obvious. So, those are considered to be uh, uh, improper and arrogant ways of saying conveying some research. So, uh, ideally those are phrases that you should uh, avoid. Okay, so, so, language is something that you have to keep pay attention to which with experience you will gain as you read papers on what kind of language is acceptable, but basically you have to keep it simple. Keep it simple, keep it clean so that a, a person reads a sentence, understands exactly what you are trying to say in the sentence and moves on to the next sentence and they are not forced to reread it again. And then there is illustration. Illustration, you have a wide range of illustration available to you. You can have graphs, you can have uh, schematics, you can have photographs. Uh, you can have charts of different kinds, you can have micrographs of different kinds, etc. So, you have to judiciously select uh, what is that form of illustration that best conveys the idea that you are trying to convey. Okay? Often uh, putting an illustration together uh, is the uh, uh, place where you actually uh, put in your creativity to come up with a very interesting and nice way of uh, efficiently conveying the information. You have a large body of information of uh, experiments conducted in various uh, conditions. But if you make a very nice simple table which summarizes all of those experiments so that when a uh, reader just looks at that table, at a quick glance they get an idea of all the range of uh, parameters that you have done and what are the important points that you are trying to highlight. Then that makes a big difference in the reader's ability to read the rest of your paper. You can keep referring to that uh, uh, you know, table often saying in table this a table such and such, uh, you have got a particular uh, item highlighted and the description that follows in that paragraph is relative to that item. So, as they read the paper, they can use this uh, table as a reference and when, when they get done, this table would, uh, will give them a very good way of summarizing that uh, result and also uh, to agreeing with you. You know, when you are trying to make some argument uh, based on a wide range of results, this table helps them focus on your argument from your point of view. Okay? So, therefore, uh, making that illustration uh, is very important and you would also understand the level of complexity of the illustration. So, if you, if for example, um, so sometimes you have to make a judgment. So, you are, uh, let us say you are trying to simply say that there is a solar panel. So, you have some satellite and associated with that there is a solar panel. If the only purpose of if the only purpose of this uh, schematic is to convey that a particular satellite has two solar panels and they are deployed in this uh, uh, manner, uh, then a schematic of uh, this nature uh, is uh, sufficient uh, if that is all you are trying to do. Uh, on the other hand, if you actually put the photograph of the satellite, you may find a lot of wiring, lot of wiring, etcetera, other details, you will have the reflective surface on top of the satellite, uh, this will have some shade associated with it, some other shade associated with it, a uh, lot of other information will be there, there will be plenty of information here. Uh, which will then be very distracting. 
okay. So, this may not even be uniform, it may be of some odd shape uh, and so on. So, lot of other detail is there, uh, which when you uh, see can be distracting. So, you have to decide what is the kind of illustration that very efficiently conveys that one information that you are trying to convey to the reader. So, that is the reason why you have to select whether a photograph makes sense or a schematic makes sense, uh, whether a table makes sense or a graph makes sense. So, these are all the ways in which you have to, uh, because a, a table will give you a whole range of numbers, right. So, you have, you have lot of different numbers here. So, if you have lot of different numbers uh, in a table, sometimes that does not immediately convey the idea that you are trying to say, okay. On the other hand, the same table when if you had plotted it as some kind of a graph of some, you know, and it showed you this. This graph is in a much better uh, position to show you, uh, convey the information that there is a maximum than this table is in a position to. If you have, if you just have various uh, x, y values here, a wide range of x, y values here, you know, you have uh, 4 by 4, 16 uh, coordinates you have here. If I put 16 coordinates down there of x and y values, uh, that does not immediately convey that there is a maximum. Whereas the same 16 points, if I point plot here, if I have all those points plotted here and I show a maximum, that is a very nice way of showing that there is a maximum. So, there is a choice, you have a choice and you have to intelligently use this choice, okay. So, uh, I think to summarize, uh, we have now spoken today about technical writing. I have compared technical writing with other forms of uh, literature and writing that you may be familiar with, uh, tried to highlight what difference uh, are there between these uh, different forms. Uh, we have also walked through all the various uh, parts of a technical document uh, and you have seen that there is a beginning, there is a middle and there is an ending and then there are certain things that are expected out of each of these points. And your familiarity with what is expected is what makes your writing better. If you become familiar, then when you write a, a technical document, it becomes easier to make the document closer to what is expected, okay. So, uh, I hope that uh, uh, this information will now uh, help you uh, become a more critical reader of uh, technical documents and will also help you become a better writer of technical documents and so that you become happier that your drafts are much better and much closer to uh, being the ones that are accepted, okay. Thank you.